What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Barbells and Trails podcast, episode 90. I'm your host, Brett, and me and Riley are back yet again. Yes, sir. Woo. We are. We are. It's been uh, kind of wild, at least a week and a half. I feel like it's been longer. Yeah, a little uh, bit, actually. Yeah, it's it's been interesting. Um, my mom got married after... A long time. You have a dad now. <laughs> I had a dad. But <laughs> well, yeah. You have a stepdad. I do. I do have a stepdad. Um, shit. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's been. I was seven, so quick math. That would mean. Seventeen years. Yeah, it has been seventeen years since so my parents got divorced. Or I was, well, I was six. Oh, okay. So, yeah. you. How long were they dating for? Um, me and Bailey were thinking about this. I was like, ah, it's only been like two years, and then we're like, well, it, it's been all, like about three okay. now. Uh, th- they were engaged for quite some time, but no, that it was a lot that happened. I might post some pictures of it, uh, maybe in the podcast episode or or something. But yeah. no, it was <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, crazy weekend, lack of sleep. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know when you went to bed, but man, yeah. I went to bed like at, I don't probably even know what time. Probably one thirty. That night ish. is a blur. Oh yeah, it was, it was a crazy night. A lot of people going, uh, coming in and out, and a lot of dancing. It was a lot of drinking. It, it was a crazy night. And then the night before, um, me and my family went to a concert. Mm-hmm. So that that was a lot of fun. We went and saw Red Wanting Blue, which is like a smaller. Almost like a acoustic folk rock that would be vibe. Fun. Yep. Um, and I I appreciated their music now more than I did last time I saw them. But like the first time I saw them, I was like sixteen, so it's kind of hard like, for uh, not sixteen. Yeah, for a sixteen year old to really get into it. But even my uncle, that's in, like known them for fifteen, damn near fifteen years, said that hey, I think this like latest album, which is what they were touring, might be their best album yet. And so it, it was cool to see them and uh, see my uncle and uh, meet some people I haven't seen in a few years. It was a lot of fun. Like it's my uncle knows the band members pretty mm-hmm. um, personally, so that's cool. I've met is them. Is that the um, is that the uncle that used to work in Indy? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the band's called Red One and Blue. Uh, they're a little smaller, but they started in college, uh, I think, in Columbus, Ohio, mm-hmm. and then they've just kind of been doing it ever since. That's and cool. It's fun. They make really good music. They're always a, a good time. I need to listen to them. I, need to listen I, to the I think album. you would have enjoyed it. I, oh, I, I think definitely would have. Yeah. Yeah, if you weren't busy that night, uh, I think you would have really enjoyed it. I didn't it. know what I was doing. But. It was fun. We took a party bus down. That was interesting. Uh, same guy that took us to Bailey Singer Prom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> nope. So... It was funny was at the end of the night after we let my uh, grandparents off, we dropped them off on our way home. Is like you to play uh, any of the music from when I drove you guys for prom, and I was like, "Oh, you wanted the wild stuff." <laughs> I was like, "Okay," I was like, I, "I was surprised." I just remember listening to um, "Mine" by Bozzy, like six times that night. Did we? Yes. I was like on repeat. It might have been, especially <laughs> at that time. Yeah, yeah, that was a big song. It was a good song. It was pretty good. But no, it, it was a lot of fun. Went down. It was so hot though. On our way down, the the air the air mm. conditioning wasn't working in the bus. It was like a it was like an oven. I'm sitting there and we we get off the bus. So I, I I think it was right when we were getting there. I was like, hey, uh, Bailey, how sweaty is my back right now? <laughs> and she's like, you got sweat all all down your back. I was like. Thanks for confirming. I had a feeling. <laughs> Let's go to the concert. <laughs> like, there's nothing I can do about it. Like, hey, it is what it is. But no, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a little different vibe. My younger cousin went with us. She seemed to have a blast. So that was cool. Uh, technically, her first concert. So oh, that, was, wow. that was fun. And then got home that night at midnight. Was up till five. And then the wedding was the next day. And yep. It was it was interesting because I think I came home and you uh you convinced me to get on COD that night. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That, I forgot that was one reason why I stayed up later. I forgot that even happened. I was like, oh yeah, we did play COD. Yeah, I just you, couldn't remember where it like, was. You know what? Screw it. 
Yeah. That's basically what you said. I know. It's like, I'll be on. Give me two minutes. <laughs> yeah. well, we already had three people. It was like, hey, Brad's getting on. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, all right, let's go. Uh, I think your only thing was be better than our random. So I was like, I got you guys. I don't know what you're talking about. We're good. <laughs> and, hey, I was. I was. I, we, you actually held your own. So. I, I, I always do. I'm not the best God player, but I'm not the worst. Well, I mean, giving the circumstance of uh, that night. Drinking, yeah. Yeah, I, I could tell you had a few. So. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, and I continued it the week, the whole weekend. So, yeah. <laughs> no, it was fun. Um, ceremony was awesome. There was a lot of people there, a lot of friends and family. I was surprised that my uh, now stepdad got as emotional as he was during the ceremony. He got really emotional. Um, I almost cried. It w- it was pretty touching. Honestly, I about teared up during the ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was it was really cool. It was cool to you see. You can tell he actually loves her. Yeah, so. it was like something. It, it's weird because you kind of anticipated it the whole time, but I feel like it kind of, at least in my eyes, went better than I even imagined. But like, well, I mean, it's just like that quote. It's like when you actually see a man like tear up or get emotional, it means he actually cares about something. Yeah, and he's not like I'm. I don't think of ever seen him emotional i don't know him i yeah. don't know him that much but i've never seen cry no so it was it, it, you could see his intention behind mm-hmm. it so yeah. it was cool um interesting the now like <laughs> get married and now he has to have back surgery so that's a whole other bucket of He's getting things old. he is getting old don't tell him that he won't want to admit it but no that night I'll was so much fun that. It was a little interesting when the the DJ that gets hired for the weddings older than the people having the wedding. Yeah. Okay, well, I say that. That's not that How weird. old was he? He was like 70. Oh. Yeah, he was old. Um, that makes way more sense now. Yeah. Let's just say the DJ, he was great. I had a lot of fun. But at the start, it was a little rough. At the start, but honestly... He it ended actually, up becoming a. He was figuring it out by the end. Oh yeah, by the end of it, it was a good night, and I oh, think yeah. he, he, he was down for whatever. I think he realized at the start he's like, oh, maybe this wasn't exactly what they wanted. So, yeah. um, it it seemed like he wanted somebody to kind of give him, I guess, the push in what direction, mm-hmm. like they wanted us to go, and Mom and Adam weren't gonna do it. So, like me and and Bailey and her friends kind of was like, hey. This is this is kind of the. Still playing made. some line dances. He did. It was fun. Busted a move. Oh yeah. My calf about gave out halfway through Cotton Eye Joe. Did cramp? I was. It was getting there. Uh, oh, whoa. I mean, you were next to me. By the end of it, I was you like, didn't "Tell me." Well, that's why I was like, "Dude, my leg." <laughs> oh, that makes more sense now. <laughs> I was like, "My left leg's feeling it, I buddy." I just said, "All my legs." That's what I said. I, I thought that's what I thought you said. <laughs> no, my left leg. I was like. I've been bouncing on one leg for four yeah. minutes straight. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> you have to switch, dude. Switch every few. That's what you said. And I was like, I'll die. I'll trip and die if I switched my other I, leg. I can do it. Boom, boom. Wait. Sh- yeah, exactly. I can't do it sitting down. Yeah, Cotton Eye Joe was fun. I was surprised getting like Kelvin and some of them out because, uh, I mean, you guys have met Kelvin a couple times on the podcast. Let's just say he's not the dancing, singing type. Nope. So. Uh, considering he came out for a few line dances and was moving, I was like, "Okay, it was a fun night." You can tell new side of Calvin. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, I didn't I didn't end up in bed till five thirty. Damn. Yeah, I think I went like two. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. We never crazy. really talked about it at the end of the night because you went to bed. I crashed, dude. I I I got home. I literally went straight to my bed. I just flopped. Uh, I well, I knew you did, and so, oh, man, what did we do? Like, I, yeah, after you, you left, the DJ was still kind of going. How long did he stay? He was there till one thirty. Dang. Yeah, and then we just kind of hung out. Oh, I must have went to bed like one twenty then. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so, kind of just hung out, and then ended up uh, coming into mom and Adam's house, and we just kind of hung out and was. Talking shit, and they opened a few wedding gifts and stuff oh. from Josh. They, they were they. Oh, that's cool. I did tell him I was like, "Hey, the only the only wedding present they actually did open that night was your guys's," and he's like, "Really?" I was like, "Yeah." Uh, Where, what did Josh get him? It was uh, his her shot glass and a wine and whiskey glass. 
Honestly, I feel like Josh is just such a great gift giver. Oh, yeah. He is. He's just... I'm honestly, surprised he didn't bring something he made. I'm kind of uh, shocked. I was, that's what I was yeah. thinking, but like, he's just so talented. In so many he ways. really is, dude. I, every time I go over there, there's there's something just else. Just something else, you know? Uh, like, you, know you never know what's happening in his barn. It's literally like a museum, um, and the exhibits change every time you're there. <laughs> uh, yeah. They always add something, change something. What is that on the wall? Which part? You have to find... What is it? Oh, like a Where's Waldo. Where's Waldo? Yeah. Is it a Waldo? Waldo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he has like a diorama that him and his kid <laughs> so made. Funny. And they hung it on the side of the wall. And then he has a tiny Where's Waldo <laughs> miniature. And then he'll hide it somewhere. And he has little other figures everywhere else. Oh, yeah. And he'll just be like, all right, find it. <laughs> it's just how his brain works. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's insane. Going into his house, like just the things that he's done, he, he does like art, arc burning art, and uh, acrylic art, and like spray paint art. He does everything, and I don't know, the dude. Just he's creative. He really he is. is. He is. It, it's kind of insane. Like the first time we all went over there, we were all like, "What the hell?" Like there's just so much. Well, I started here. getting a tour. Yeah. Was, was it you? I think it was yeah, you. Because yeah. I had been there once before you. They're like, like, hey, yeah. come up here. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, come look at this. And there's like just paint cans everywhere. I was yeah. like, what the heck? Yeah. A whole paint room. <laughs> yeah. Everything. So it, it was it was such a fun night. I, I don't think it could have been any better. I think everybody had so much fun. It was fun. Uh, the, it was funny because definitely some of the people that were there were like, hey, if you guys ever have parties again, <laughs> we're coming oh. back. Oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, all right. I was like, That's I'm cool. down for it. So. It was a lot of fun, and then, like, last week it was kind of relaxed, but I, I went up to a buddy's house and just moved in, so it was kind of like a housewarming party in a way, and then I went and saw Josh last weekend, played some darts, kind of got messed up playing darts. He, he, it was, it was, I, I was holding my own. I was holding my own. Yeah, yeah. He did tell me, he's like, you and Riley need a dartboard. I was like, oh, we've talked about it. <laughs> yep. I was like, we've talked about it. I could see us out there just I mean, going While crazy. you were over there, I was at another wedding. I'm yeah, no. Be at- Three weddings this year. I know, but th- that's the thing. So for me, when it comes to weddings, I this is the first wedding I've been to as an adult. Like, I mean, same. As a kid, I up until like the age of thirteen, I'd probably been to fifteen plus weddings easily. Are you serious? Like a lot, and I was probably in seven. Um, I, I was a ring bearer for a long time. That was my first job. I started early. I didn't get paid. I did end up in the newspaper a few times. So that's cool. <laughs> Dude, you're famous. Right? When I mean, you're a kid and you're like, that's me. <gasps> that's me. I am so famous. <laughs> Where's my money? Okay, I'm, in, I'm in the newspaper. That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah. No, this was. I was too, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It was um, it's actually, this is random. But mm-hmm. since you're talking about I have to talk about it, you know. Um, but I, I don't know how we got on there. But my mom said, like, this article. And it was just about my mom, Noah, and me. Going to Spartan races. Oh, really? Yeah, that's kind of cool. It was it was pretty cool, but I mean, I don't really remember much of it. When was it? Like, the, how old were you? I want to say like fourteen. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. No, that was. Yeah, I was in a lot of weddings as a kid, so this was like the first time that I guess I had been at a wedding with like all my family since probably my aunts. And at that point, I was eight. So, I, I mean, I was pretty pretty young, so it was cool to see everybody come out and, and everything. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Honestly, I think I've been to more funerals than weddings in my life. That's sad. I'm just saying, like, I I might have been in one wedding, but I remember, like, four funerals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> yep. So you're saying all these weddings that you've been to? I'm I like, like I've been to so many funerals. Dude. Like you have no wait idea. Wait a minute, I don't remember any weddings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've I've been to a decent handful of funerals. I have none of them are quite as lively as weddings. What? The <laughs> what? I don't know why. <laughs> I told Bailey years ago. There better be a bouncy castle at my funeral. If not, I'm taunting her. <laughs> I don't care. I didn't at the time. I didn't think about it. That means Bailey would be old as shit too, most likely. So 
the likelihood that her or any of my friends that could be at my wedding or wedding well at my funeral uh can't really enjoy it but i was like i don't care bring Dude, the walker in i there. would be 71 <laughs> years old and i'm still jumping in that shit <laughs> break your hip i don't care <laughs> Call an ambulance. Uh, I told Bailey, it's like, bring a walker in there. You can do some flips. I've seen grannies do it, I think. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Oh. But, uh, yeah, no. The, mm. <laughs> why, <laughs> why are we talking about the funeral? <laughs> Sorry. This <laughs> is how my brain works. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that turn. Um, <laughs> Your face is kind of red, dude. A little bit. I don't, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> Uh, so you got any other weddings? So the so the wedding was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was um. What was I, your favorite memory of the night? Of the wedding? Yeah. I mean, we were not there for too long. My mom. I mean, oh, you mean there? Yeah. Here. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you meant there. Oh my god. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Should have clarified. Um. What was my favorite memory? I mean, overall, it was just fun. It so. was. It really. It really was. I don't know. I I. It was fun on parties seeing a like few these, people busted you, down. On parties like these, you can't really catch specifically yeah. name one part of the night that you had fun. No, because like, the in the fun. end, it's like I just enjoyed the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did love that we got some pictures. Yeah. Because we don't take pictures ever. Guys don't. You, me. Guys don't. No. Like, I mean, me and my best friend have been friends for like four since we were four. Maybe have two pictures of each other. Yeah, no. Like, uh, and So I did think about it. I was like, man. We really should try taking more pictures more often. Just like, even if we just take like one group photo of just all of us guys at any like get together, or just like when we went to the concert or something. Yeah, like take take a group photo of everybody. Just like, even if it's just one throughout the night, just so we have it and be like, mm-hmm. that was fun. Like you guys remember all going with, yeah, like so and so years mm-hmm. down the road. Just because it's like, man, I I think part of it is because we got so. Almost got it backwards. I like, I feel like my mom's generation and even my grandparents took photos all the time because that was the only time you could. So it's like if somebody had a camera and they were s- capturing stuff, it was awesome because it's like they're capturing yeah. memories. Not everybody has a camera. That's it's true. not just accessible to, to be able to do do that. It's like I, I feel like back in the day, more people had cameras or camcorders to oh they definitely did capture definitely did moments my, my my mom has so many like records yeah well and the thing is now is i feel like for me i kind of stopped taking photos because i was like man i don't want to be at the time in like high school i don't want to be that kid that just like doesn't live in the moment at concerts yep. doesn't live in the moment w- with doing things and just wants to take photos all the time and now I'm like, oh, man, I think I'm kind of regretting that. And I kind of want to go back because it's not like I take many photos anyways. I, I think I just kind of space in a way. Sometimes I do. Sometimes like, it doesn't even pop into my head. Yeah. Like, it's just – it is because you want to be in the moment. You yeah. want to live in the moment. So you just, like, your brain does not go like, oh, I need to take a picture. I feel I feel like nowadays, even with, like, other people our age, it's almost like a negative condensation because they're like – as social media came up, everybody's like, let's take photos. Let's take photos. Let's post them. And it's like, if I take a photo, I hardly ever post anything. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it is it is interesting where I'm like, okay, maybe I got to get out of that, that headspace and be like, if I want to take a photo with everybody, let's do it. Because I'd rather capture it than not have it at all. Yeah. That I, I think I realized that like over the past even like four years, there's been tons of like, man, I really wish we should have got pictures together. We should have done something. And just so and I, I just relive did. that moment. Yeah, yeah. And like, even though I might have some videos of the concert, it would have been cool to get a picture with all of us together, so, mm-hmm. something along those yeah. lines. And like, even like, first concert me and Kelvin went to, like that was one of the first times we hung out. I don't have any pictures of the night, or at least not a, of us together. Yep. Uh, and stuff. And but at the same time, we didn't know that we were also going to end up being friends afterwards. Did I? All right. Did I tell you that? You've never told me this story. What? The, How you and Freddie met. Oh, how me and Freddie? Yeah. Met? I was talking about Kelvin. Huh? <laughs> I said Kelvin. I thought said Freddie. Oh, no. I, I, I mean, I met Freddie at work, and then I'm trying to think the first time we hung out outside of work, mainly. It might have been 
It might have been a concert. Yeah, yeah, I think it was actually. I think that was when me, Freddie, and Craig went to the NF concert. Okay. That was a lot of fun. That was a good night. Uh, <laughs> you never. I don't. Th- I don't know if you ever actually got to meet Craig in person, but he got hair caught or er, hair. He got gum caught in his hair oh during the gosh. concert, and Ooh. he has he has long hair. And oh. it was because he was hang- head banging so much that his hair got in his mouth and took his gum. <laughs> oh wait, really? Well, I mean, at least it's his. <laughs> so he was like, he went to the bathroom, but then he came back. And then at one point, I think I look over, and he's literally using, he pulled out his keys, and he's literally cutting a piece of his hair out that got caught in the gum. And I'm just like, what, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't upset about it. He was, he was having fun, uh, but it was just like, oh, That's no. Hilarious. That is actually hilarious. The funny thing is, is Freddie didn't realize it at first. I look over and it's like, what? What the hell? What are you doing? <laughs> just... Yeah, right? Uh, but no, yeah, the first time me and Kel- Kelvin really hung out, like we knew of each other. Concert, too. Uh, yeah, and it was, you told it was me. because of you. No, I mean, basically yep. because you didn't go to the Michigan Go Kelly concert. That was the first time me and Kelvin hung out oh. outside of work. I should text Kelvin, like, you know, the only reason you and Brett are friends is just because of me. So. Where's, he might not know that. Where's my thank you? What the fuck? <laughs> he did. He did say at the wedding, or well, he didn't, but his girlfriend did, and said that uh, the word he he talks about me a lot, and that we're besties. And I was like, really? No. I was like, what? That's so cute. And then she's like, yeah, he says you guys talk all the time. And then I broke his ego because I was like, do we? <laughs> I just saw his face drop. <laughs> just like from a smile to <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like, "What do you mean?" I was like, <laughs> "But no, I didn't mean that badly." I was, I just said, "I feel like we don't talk super often. Like I feel like sometimes we'll have maybe a week or two where we barely talk. Mm-hmm. But sometimes though, it's because he's doing military stuff. Yeah. Or so I know he's busy or out life. of state. Life and, gets in the way." Exactly, but then I did tell her, I was like, okay, we might not necessarily talk super often, but if we do end up on the phone together, it's probably a minimum hour conversation. And I, I mean, not, like, even when they went to Wendy's, you guys stayed on the phone for at least a good 30 minutes, 35? I don't think it was that long, but it was at it least was 20. Long. It was at least 20 minutes, for sure. It, well, yeah. And then... <laughs> because he was like, how the fuck do you know I'm in a car? <laughs> I know things, bud. Yeah. You know, I'm not the only one that's connected to the FBI. No. <laughs> Ooh. No. Well, and I even told her, I was like, yeah, one of the first times, like, we had a long conversation. He was driving to Columbus. We were on the phone, basically, from Indy to Columbus. Like, he was in the hotel, and he even said to her, and I forgot. He's like, yeah, I had to get off the phone because I had to check into my room. Or maybe I he had even gone through check-in. And he's like, yeah, I'm about to go into the room. There's already a guy in here, so I'm going to have to get off the phone. And I was like, oh, all right. And we just talked for, like, three hours about random stuff. Um, I, I think I was playing COD or something while we were on the phone. And he, we were talking about the differences between Americans and Europeans and, and like, the, their opinion of us and how they see us and how sometimes. Wonder, how do they see us? Honestly, a lot of other countries think we're arrogant. Okay, I can see it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, true. And and that was the thing me and him were talking about, and, and I told him, I was like, I, I see why people see Max. it that way. I really do. But I, I, I did say, I was like, some of it I don't feel like is our fault because most of even global news, not saying there's not other news going on, but a lot of global events involve us. Like, there's – I mean, we're, just, we're very – I mean – and like if something in happens in the U.S., it gets blown up. Honestly, like it really does. And, and then it's like, and when, if you do even watch, like, stick up to, keep up to date on just news in general, it's like ninety percent of it, if not more, is all stories in the U.S. involving it the U.S. Is crazy. Like nothing, like our our news does not focus on anything outside the United States. Really, honestly, the unless last, it's something major. Yeah, that's the thing. The last thing I know from like out of state, like. London for it. the last thing I've known from there is when the Queen died. Yeah, that was it. 
I have and, not heard anything over there. And then I did tell him, I was like, it, it is also hard, I feel like, for some people to really wrap their heads around if they've never been here to understand, like, how diverse the United States is, how large it is, like, how many people there are. Mm-hmm. It's hard for, I feel like, somebody in a European country sometimes to be like, dude, you can travel all of Europe. I still have more land to travel in the United States alone. Mm-hmm. Like, there's... You, you could be in every country in Europe, and it's like I might not even be through all 50 states. Exactly. And so I think some people at times do lose at least the view of how large the U.S. is. So it's like I don't think it's always just an arrogance. It's just people just don't. They don't fully understand. No. Which we don't fully understand. No. There, so. And, and I, I feel like sometimes, I guess in an arrogant way, but most – most people in the United States don't even stay up on U.S. news, let alone other stuff going on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I bet not. Man. So I don't. So yeah, I live here, right? So I think that just is a part of it. But no, we had a fun conversation with that because I was like, "You're, you have a European background. Your mom's English and your dad's Polish." Would yeah. does she still live there? No, she lives in Florida. Hmm, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, she. They they've been in Florida for. 20, so she, pushing um, 20 years. She, um, she's still married with, oh uh, no. Yeah, his dad passed away. Oh, really? Yeah. How? Just, uh, that's kind of a freak thing, but med- oh. medical stuff, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I don't no, know what I'm, it, I'm sorry to you. <laughs> no, you I'm sorry, it, Kelvin. His mom's pretty cool, though. I, I'm, she is. I'm looking forward to seeing her in a couple of weeks, hopefully, when she, she We visits. should, like, get her, get her out here at a party. Oh, I think we are. <laughs> Dude. That would be hilarious. Uh, uh, my mom even said it the other day, and she was like, she Has your mom met her? Yeah. What? Um, Last I, summer. No, she came out here. Oh, she did? Yeah. Yeah, we uh, came out and swam and hung out and okay, stuff. Cool. So, hopefully, we see her again. I think I was the first person in his friend group to meet her, because I was like, you guys are going to the fair? I was like, I'll meet you there. I got to meet your mom. Like, I'm coming over. Uh, she, she's very sweet. She still has an accent. Doesn't look she does. anything like Kelvin. Nope. Not even close. Nope. I don't I don't even Kelvin know if I is, see a resemblance. Kelvin is literally tall and lanky. Lanky. And she is short. And dar- dark hair, dark yeah. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I need to see, an, like, a picture, another picture of his dad to be like, all right, let me. Where is this? <laughs> Where are you getting this? Because it's not from your mom. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, even I know that hey, his uncle's he like got five five. Eyes. Like his uncle's short. Like, maybe, maybe he got her, her eyes. Okay, well, all right. When she's here, let me stare into her eyes, and then I'll find Kelvin. Or her I'll, facial. I'll tell you. Features. You never know. It's true. I look like my mom. Uh, hopefully, without the beard. Oh, you do. I do. Yeah. You, do. you just now realize it. Yeah, kind of. Oh. People have said that since I was real little. Like really? you look so much I like mean, your mom. You got a more round face. I feel like. Mhm. I do. Yep. Your your brother looks like a lot like your mom. My brother looks. Yeah. Wait, which one? Noah. Noah. Yeah. Nathan. I don't know. He looks like dad. He yes, really I think he's the one that looks the most I've, like your dad. Honestly, I look. I don't know. I feel like you're just a weird combination. Thank you. Like I feel like Nathan's your dad no is your mom nathan's my dad well like <laughs> <laughs> looks like your dad hey yeah and then katie i feel I mean, like me and katie like... actually look like yeah and i think i just get most of it from my mom mm-hmm. so maybe hopefully i didn't get yeah, there was there was one picture i know because like i said me and noah don't have a lot of pictures together but there was one picture of noah one time and i looked back at it and i was like oh my god he looks so much like his mom <laughs> like it was it was just I don't know what it was, but in those particular photos, I was like, it's April, but a man. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. And I, and I think I showed him, but he was like, I don't see it. I was like, I see it. He was like, <laughs> secretly he did know it. Oh, and he was like, it. okay, I need to grow up my beard. But that was when it was a little shorter. Yeah, too. <laughs> probably. Oh, that's hilarious. That's so funny. Well, because that was also when he got thinner. Uh, so he wasn't as bulky oh, either. I know what you mean. So like Is even this in like his when face he was, like, 15, was slim. 16? No, this was when he was an organ. So this was when he oh, lost a lot of weight down there. Dang. Yeah. So his face had slimmed down a lot. Yeah. And and even that I was like, wait a second, I'll have to show you the photos after we get done recording. I but I was like, 
Huh. That's April. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, hey, it, it is what it is. Did you do anything for Men's Mental Health Awareness Month? Was I supposed to be? I don't know. No. I mean, I don't I guess know. we didn't talk to each other about our problems. We missed out. It's July. I know, it's, it's over. It's we can't fun. talk no, about no, it. No, no, we can we talk can. about the whole month. <laughs> okay. How did the month go for you, Brett? I drank a lot. <laughs> That's not a good start, bud. Dude, what's your problems? Come on. <laughs> tell me. <sighs> Think of me mm. as your therapist. Mm. Mm. Loneliness. Big one. It's been Get there a for COVID a while. vaccination. <laughs> that will fix it? That will fix it? <laughs> so I feel connected with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm connected to the government. I, I, I never feel alone. They're with some, me always. Probably some therapists <laughs> have said that so many times. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I was expecting you to take that route, but I'll, I like it. Straight to the point. <laughs> you need a vaccine. But actually, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Okay, good. Just you know, twenties. It's a it's a weird time. Tw- yeah, I've definitely noticed that. It's like, it's like. I see. Getting out of high school to like twenty five, maybe. I feel like even thirty. Like I, I feel like most 30. people don't. It's just a weird. It is it's a like weird ten. You're years in the middle of, of everything. Of literally life. Yes. It's weird. Like okay, so did I? And I don't even think this was necessarily. It wasn't a like men's mental awareness month thing, but I sent you a reel the other day, and like I was like, in your twenties is the most strange. Literally, I was about to go there. Contradiction. Yep. It's like you're both supposed to know what you're supposed to do and be young enough. Not to worry about it. Yeah, he was you're like, supposed to find like be in love, but not get married, and like, and just all sorts of things. Yeah, he was like, you're supposed to find a relationship, but also be kind of lonely in a way and, and single. And yeah, live your life, and you're supposed to get married and ha- start a family, but then at the same time, enjoy your like twenties. You're supposed to be financially capable, but also be broke, and, and like all these things. And it's like I've never thought about it, but I feel like that's really true, and I think that is part of the challenge of being in your 20s especially nowadays because you also see everyone else Mm -hmm. online so it just amplifies those effects of like feeling like man i'm not enough maybe i'm not doing the right thing i don't know what i'm doing with my life yet like i'm still there's still a lot going on you're trying to wrap your health like self around it then even though at the most part it's like you might not know what you're doing but that's not a problem it really isn't you i feel like nowadays or at least I, i know i do i feel like i put too much weight on myself uh, yeah. When it comes to what age I'm at, and I'm like I'm I'm only 23. There's still seven years before I hit 30. That's a long time. It it feels close, but then at the same time, seven years is a long time. Yeah. And so there's a lot that can change. And even then, I'm only 30 years old. Seven years from now, like it seems both close, but then at the same time, you're like that's like yeah. practically I mean, a lifetime. Yeah, I mean, I haven't even been out of high school for seven years. Yeah, going from that, just like I've been. I've honestly been thinking about the future a lot. Yeah. And I mean, I've been talking to you about different jobs to yeah. go to. Just feel, I don't just know. Trying to keep your options open because you, you, yeah. you feel like you don't know what path you want to go down. Like, I, mean, I I like my path right now. Yes. I just, I don't know. I keep thinking about money. And it's not like I don't have money. Yeah. And it's not like I'm not saving up still. But it's just, I don't know. I keep thinking about this, like, inflation. Yeah. And now the freaking present day debate's coming up, so I feel like inflation's going to get way worse. Yeah, after this, because usually it does. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. The twenties is a lot. Like initially, when I was growing up, I remember telling Bailey I wanted to be married by twenty five and have a kid by twenty seven. Oh boy, okay, right? And was your girl? <laughs> no shit. And so <laughs> you find her. You find it, her. It, I don't know. It's just, it's something I've never really talked to anybody about, but it's like, at least maybe not publicly in particular intimacy in like a relationship is something I've wanted for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like even at a young age, like it, and some of that, like if I was at a therapist, they probably relate a lot of that to uh, my parents' marriage mm-hmm. and like not getting, I mean, Bailey's talked about it, like maybe not getting enough affection or, or attention as a child at certain points. And, and certain things like I've always wanted that like loving relationship. And yeah. That's something you I've always, always wanted for. to be with somebody that's loving to you. Always like there has 
hasn't been a time I I haven't wanted it. And so it's it's something where it's like you want it now, but then you also realize you can't push something like you can't force that. Mm-hmm. And then also in certain ways, I know I don't put myself out there enough, but at the same time, it's like I I hate dating apps. There's no easy way to go around it yeah, nowadays. Exactly. It's so weird. Like that's see that's going back to like it's 20s is just a weird way. Like it, you can go out and maybe find some person, but then again, she could be looking just for like a one night stand. Yeah. And I, maybe that's what you're looking for. Maybe it's no. not, but like, I'm just saying for yeah. everybody, but like yeah. usually people want a long term like relationship, but like with two people just lining up very hard. It is. And I mean, me and uh, like Freddie and them have talked about it and it's like, Dating apps almost feel like your only option today, which is sad. But at the same time, they're a bad option. I feel it's like. a very bad option. It really is. Like, there's, there's still so nothing many, better than just meeting somebody. There's just so many bots out there. Nowadays. That's where yeah. it's like, I kind of wish. Like, honestly, if you were on Tinder six years ago, oh, yeah. it was actually pretty likely that you could end up on good dates, actually meet somebody. Nowadays, it's it's almost pointless it's usually just and even then like girls our age see a lot of options Some, sometimes they don't, don't want to settle like mm-hmm. we've westernized over what's the word i feel like our generation is overly westernized and i'm also just naturally been more traditional so it's like for me to try finding a girl it's like i would prefer somebody a little old school but it's mm-hmm. it's harder to find nowadays too it's true. And so it just makes it more difficult. It's true. You know, it's, mm. it is what it is. You just have to, I don't know, be at the right place at the right time. Right? More concerts, maybe? Nah. Maybe. I mean, there was there was that one girl. I was? No? I, th- that was the thing. <laughs> that was the thing. Uh, so we, we kind of mentioned this before the podcast, but, it, like, you and me kind of forgot because Men's Mental Health Awareness Month kind of mm-hmm. gets overlooked by pride. Okay. And and that was the one thing I saw a post, someone talking about it. He's like, June's supposed to be Men's Mental Awareness Month. And the most ironic yet depressing thing about it is no one ever talks about it. Wow. Never gets brought up. No one, even though men probably need it more than anybody. Like, I, there's a point in time that I think guys should be more open maybe not necessarily i mean it's just factual more men kill themselves than oh it is it's it factual especially our age so yes i would say men do need it more we do but women want guys to conform to the way other women are emotionally and how they open up because they see it as well this is what helps us it'll help you and it's not our, no it doesn't work the same for us yeah. like Talking to somebody probably helps, but it's it's not as common. Some guys aren't oh, like mm-hmm. willing, so it makes it more difficult. It doesn't mean they don't need to talk about it with somebody, but they it does not need to usually be there. Do. It, it definitely doesn't need to be their significant other half the time. Like they need to talk to another guy. Yeah, exactly. They, they need to let it out in a in a fashion that someone else can understand. Mm-hmm. And and I feel like that's where like socially and even like listening to somebody the other day on a a podcast just talking about this and this is something i've known but like literally your your overall mortality rate goes down if you're lonely and don't social like don't socialize so for guys i feel like sometimes it's good to actually talk about things but sometimes just being around your friends and just having fun just having that environment so much just being near somebody Mm -hmm. like not even necessarily doing something or actually opening up but just being around the people you enjoy being with that's very true i feel like with girls they would want that but then at the same time they'd be like oh tell me what's going on we're like guys it's like i can tell you don't want to talk about it but let's just coming out with me right now. yeah let's just hang out like let's let's go out let's yeah go golfing let's go to the bar just have a couple drinks just hang out and sometimes i feel like that's all a guy needs in certain ways yeah. like it, it's not perfect it's but just it's whatever you can get helps. your mind off yes. because usually you're just very quick in the moment mm-hmm. like let's say you just broke up and you're very very depressed and 
maybe you're getting very dark and you're like, maybe life is not like the answer. Maybe you just, yeah. you know, but then one of your friends knows that you just broke up. It's like, Hey, you want to go bowling? Let's go. And let's get a few friends. And then you go and then you actually feel like way more alive. Yeah. I feel like part of it is like you said, it doesn't, it gets your mind off of it and not always in a way of like, you forget about it. Sometimes it is, but I think sometimes it just like puts it to the side. Cause and I think it depends on the person, but in general, I think this is also pretty common is to get over something painful. Sometimes you just do need separation. You need time and eventually mm-hmm. you'll be able to come to terms with whatever happened or whatever you're dealing with and you can work your way around it. And I feel like sometimes just being with other people and kind of forgetting about it isn't necessarily like you're just like, I, I don't want to remember it, but it's, it's almost like you have, you're in the moment you're with friends you remember what's around you what mm-hmm. you have like that kind of stuff it, yeah. it makes you more uh grateful for the people you do have around you yeah. like even even last friday i didn't know it but i'm glad i i went over and hung out with josh because i mean his his cousin passed away and i know it'd been really rough on him and he hadn't really talked much about it but he even said when i came out that night he's like dude honestly i'm glad you're here like it i had a rough day and it was just fun that you came over and that's good and just had fun and it was nothing planned it was just spur of the moment i was nearby Did you just show up yeah D- didn't even call him but i just showed up and but we had a great time and I, it's he might not always think that but you know sometimes it's needed just to have somebody around mm-hmm. and even if you wanted to talk about it or didn't want to it's like hey I- i'm here for exactly. whatever you need always be be there for somebody yeah exactly always it just sucks when you also sometimes have a friend that you know is going through something especially a guy because it is a lot harder depending on the guy to when you can tell something's wrong but then they won't open up to you Mm. and actually talk to you about it and you're like dude i i because i feel like guys feel like when we do something like that we're burdening somebody yeah and it's like you don't want to listen to me yeah like where like a girl it's not like i feel like in a group of women it's not that it's different it's like express it we're here for you whatever Mm -hmm. a guy it just naturally it's like our how our minds work we're like i feel like i'm burdening somebody by putting all this on you telling this all all this to you now you gotta live with the shit i'm dealing with yeah it's like dude at least for me and some guys might think that way because i would be surprised but it's like for me in any situation it's like that I don't care. Like, talk to me about it. Tell exactly. me. Yep. I might necessarily have advice, but at least get it out. Like, mm-hmm. get it off your chest. Yep. It, it helps more than you realize. Yeah. See, it did end up turning into a mental health topic. <laughs> we hey. didn't even plan on it. But nope. It's, but you know what? I'm here for it. It's something that gets overlooked a lot. Yeah. I feel like nowadays, like, with young men, like, things have become so red-pilled in the way of, like, like, you know, some of those guys, like, kind of like an Andrew Tate, but like, I feel like he's even calmed down from how he was initially portraying a lot of things. But in the way of, like, you don't need you don't need to be happy. You just need to work oh, and I make money you, yeah. and get That's girls not true. and, That's not true. like, whatever. And Because, honestly, half the time when you do, and maybe you overwork yourself, and then you just feel even worse. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if I just did that and, like, just work nonstop. I just feel like this is stupid. And, and also, it depends on the person. Like some I people mean, yeah. can do that. Other people, it just it, you can't. Yeah, it's it's hard. Exactly. So everybody's different. It, it's just crazy when you see that, and you see a lot of young guys, and it's like some of that's probably great for some of them. Mm-hmm. And some of the things those guys say, there's definitely some conviction behind it, where it's like they're making some good points. Yeah. But some people take it as like biblical verse almost. It is like, buddy, like it's not it's not that deep. Like yeah. you don't. You don't have to have a flashy car. Not everybody's going to have a flashy car. You got to accept that. And, e- and that's it even something. Not, it doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank account. Yeah. Like, it literally depends. Like, what matters is yeah. what Who you are. Yeah. What you feel like you are. Yeah. You, you shouldn't have your identity identity wrapped up in material things mm-hmm. and other things. Because it's like none of my friends are friends of me because of what I have or 
what I bring to the table financially because I never have. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's one thing where when you do get successful like that, you do almost get more isolated because you don't know who to trust. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's there for you or what you have. I mean, one quote that I know is um, don't don't act like the person that you want to become. Act like the person that you are. Yeah. Which is true. Like, yeah. don't don't let people just like their thoughts let them become control you. you. Yeah. yeah. Don't, you got to take what you can from other people's teachings, their words, their podcasts, their mm-hmm. books, their whatever, but turn it into your own version. Of but now life. if you have goals in the future and the good goals, then yeah, go for it. Go, go for it. Yeah. yeah. You have nothing, nothing to, um, I don't even know what the word is. My brain just blinked. Oh, well, well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, before we do end this podcast, we did pull a few cards. We haven't done this in a minute. Uh, there was one in particular. I'm going to ask you this first, just because okay. it'll be interesting to uh, to see now that you're in a relationship. You're tied down. I am. What's something every couple should have in their relationship if they want it to last? I say this as you are not even 20. But, yeah. Communication. Yep. And that's very true. That's, yeah. that's probably... If I go to one, two, three, communications at the top. Okay, what's number two? Trust. Mm-hmm. And then three is just re- um, religion. Mm. Because if honestly, if you both are not on the same religion either. It makes it difficult. Yeah, it makes it really difficult. And I've seen that with a lot of. I mean, some of that was my parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but communications definitely top. Because if you don't have, if you don't have good communication, then how are you going to succeed? with each other Mm -hmm. yeah i mean even in the short term Mm -hmm. like it might that's the thing is a relationship can last for a while before things really come out but if you don't set the a good baseline at the start eventually it'll catch up to you yeah and i'm not saying that that has to be like a two-hour call every night just like yeah just texting like throughout the day boundaries just talking sending a good morning text like every day I actually actually communicate, actually having conversations, mm -hmm. which a lot of people lack nowadays. Nope, it's my turn. Yep. Okay. Why do you venture outside your comfort zone? (laughs) This is a good one. I probably don't do it enough, even though I've talked about doing it more. Um, I feel like the reason I have is because even in the s- situations and scenarios where, where I have done that. And at the time I wasn't sure about it. I learned to like really enjoy it and appreciate whatever I did do. And I mean, you're it, a very open person. Yeah. So like inside your comfort zone, what is, what is on the outside? That's like one thing. Honestly, sometimes social situations, like you'd like, be surprised. As a group? Yeah, it just depends. Like, Honestly, let's say we were out with the guys and Freddie or somebody pushed me to try going and talking to some girl. If somebody was actually interested in, I'd probably be more apt to doing it. But sometimes when it's something where it's you like... You just don't like getting pressured. I, I don't. Have, I have noticed that. I don't, but it, it just depends on what it is. Sometimes <laughs> I'm like, all right, ah, fuck let's it. go, let's go. <laughs> uh, then there's other times I'm like, no. Like yeah, I mean it, it makes sense. It makes sense. It, it is yeah, it, it's like very it's, comparable. That's, that goes to just don't let people peer pressure you. Yeah, it, w- but yeah, outside my comfort zone, I mean like even little things like something I didn't necessarily expect, but just kind of hopped on it and didn't think much about it. And even Bailey and my mom at the time was like, I mean, considering you've never traveled, this might be kind of different for you. But first going out to Oregon, I was like, oh really. Didn't think anything of it. I was like, yeah, was it like I'm getting on a plane? What, what was the scariest part? I, what, was it flying? No, I mean, honestly, I Bailey and them were actually very surprised that I was like at ease. Like I just I feel like if I went by myself, maybe I it's because I'm a little younger. I mean, I, when I did it, I was your age. I wasn't even twenty. Oh shit! I thought you were at least twenty. I don't think I was twenty yet. I might if I was. It was it was before I was twenty. I thought you were was in like twenty one at least. Mm-mm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it was first time ever really going cross country. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like part of the reason why I wasn't as, I don't know. Cause I feel like it's weird. Cause I feel like young me would have been 
very nervous about it. But for some reason, I was very just like, this is what it is. I, I know who I'm going to see. So I have somebody there that makes it easier. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm going to see them. I'm hopping on a plane. What's the big deal? I'm exactly. going 2,000 miles away. What about it? Like, <laughs> like deal yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll, I'll play it by ear. If, if stuff comes up and I deal with stuff at the airport, I'll deal with it. But it's not going to change you, um, anything. Besides that, since you were younger, what do you think you have achieved? Like that, what what is in your comfort zone now, that wasn't there? Mm, I don't know. I I feel like I've cut like you've me talked in the past. I've come into myself more than I used to, mm-hmm. and so I feel like if anything, I'm almost more comfortable with myself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, just in a lot of ways, in a Which, lot of I mean, different. That fashions. happens once yeah. you get older. You actually start becoming yourself. Yeah. Because I feel like, I feel like a lot of people that's young, they just like try to be somebody else. Yeah. Because you don't, it, it's easier to try idolizing somebody else and be like them than it is to mm-hmm. come into your own. Yeah. Like we talked, uh, it, especially at a young age, you don't know how to do that, especially in public situations in school and everything. It's, it's a rough environment to try truly being yourself in unless you just get lucky and and you're you're accessible or your parents kind of had that in you your the whole time but i mean your teenage years in high school it's not easy for anybody so uh, but i think at the time you don't realize that you think you're the only one dealing with mm-hmm. this kind of situation the feelings whatever and so it takes it takes time and it, it takes forethought afterwards that you can kind of look back and be like oh man i was overthinking this i, I shouldn't mm-hmm. have been nervous about that i, I don't know yeah. why and and then now you look back at it and you're like oh yeah that wasn't wasn't even that bad yeah like you move on you overthink mm-hmm. is there something you tend to take for granted wait yeah is there something you tend to take for granted what can you change to what can you do to change that is there something that i take yeah. for granted honestly just being born in the United States, you know, like, yeah, I could have been born in Africa. I could have been a black boy, but with not a roof over my head, no food, no water. Like, I, I feel I, I like a lot of people take so much for granted here. Like, yeah. I mean, yes, maybe we have a corrupt government or so yeah. or so, you know, but like people can play to the end of the day, you're your belly is full you have water yeah you have a roof over you and that's not even saying that that's everybody in the united states i think that is also comparing like what we were talking about earlier is how some people look at the u.s is i do think in some places they think every american's rich every american's well off and it's not true like we we still have a lot of poverty here and and we still deal with a lot but in general, compared to a lot of places, we do have it lucky. Most people have decent paying jobs. Mm-hmm. We can survive. Yeah. Not saying it's always easy. easy. It's and, not easy. And it's not fair, but that's also that's life. life. It's never yeah. been that way. Exactly. But out of all the places I could have been born, I am glad I'm here. Definitely just take life granted. Yeah. No. Def- oh, yeah. Yep. Definitely. Um, This is going to be an interesting one. What does your perfect day look like? Oh. Um. Hmm. For me, honestly, I think there would have to be some activity involved. What do you mean by that? Either. Gym. <laughs> just go, go lift some weights for a half oh. hour and then go, go get breakfast. <laughs> oh, no. No. Um, just so, so an activity for us to kind of do. And this is kind of weird because this is something I've actually heard from a dating app or not a dating app, sorry, a dating podcast. And it's like, you can build a better connection with somebody if you do something that on a date causes a lot of emotion, either like scary, fun, excitement, like all these things, it builds a tighter bond quicker with somebody on a first date. So that is part of it. But also for me, if I'm going on a first date, I want to be able to kind of let loose and have fun. And to do that, I feel like if I, we just went to dinner and that was it, I feel like I might be too buttoned up and kind of tense. Where I feel like if we went and did an activity, it would kind of allow me to let so loose. You're talking about like, 
like mini golf. Maybe even go to a movie. When you talk about like, perfect day, do you mean going on a date night? Oh, is that what that meant? That no, meant? I'm just saying, what does your perfect day look like? Oh, date. Oh, I, day. I, 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 <laughs> D-A-Y. I thought you said date. No, I was like. <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about? I mean, about? <laughs> I could see kind of. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he gave me shit when I was like, Jim. I was like, I don't know where you go with this. <laughs> Yeah, I thought you said date. Um, <laughs> oh man, okay. Um, perfect day. I don't know. Probably, honestly, just hang out with friends, and that could be an, an activity. Um, <laughs> but honestly, like even if I just had like a bunch of friends over here, hung out, just talked, maybe watched a TV show together, hung out, got in the pool, listened to music, go to a concert together. Being like, like boys, j- yeah, honestly, just doing that, being around family, probably having a few drinks, but just enjoy enjoying the day mm-hmm. together, not thinking about things, not worrying about things. Fair enough, yeah. Just there. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot different answer than what I was giving. <laughs> I was so confused. Uh, what's the kindest thing anyone has ever done for you? Kindest thing? That's actually tough. I don't know. Um. What is the kindest? Mm. I mean, I can think of kind acts people have done to me, but I don't know. Just na- name one of them that first popped into your head. Uh, the first one that popped in my head is when I got my first car. My dad paid for half of it. That was really that's, nice. That's of pretty it. cool. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know what the kindest thing would be. Or er, okay. I mean, just this like this was recent and uh, unexpected, and sometimes that has something to do with it when. Hope showed up and oh, gave you all true. the goodies yeah, and left you a nice note, that like things like that. Yeah, I feel like that's something that would pop into my head. I don't know if I got asked the same question. I don't know. It probably, honestly, it'd probably be something my sister's done for me. I couldn't pinpoint it, but there's just things where, like, uh, is how she is, and it is slightly her personality. She just kind of does things without being asked, and then that's nice. Yeah, yeah. And you just kind of appreciate it. Yeah. Good. Um, What's something you've learned about me during this game that you are most likely to remember? We have not done this question before. Uh, uh, we might need to work on pronunciation between day and date. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if that was on you or me. I think it was I a little s- bit of both. <laughs> what does your perfect day look like? I swear I, that's what I, I, I don't said. know. For some, yeah, I heard, <laughs> I heard date. <laughs> Um, what's something I've learned about you? Hmm. And fuck, we've only done four okay. cards. Fuck the game. Okay. During the podcast. Oh. I don't know. Like we, we have fun conversations here, but like since you've moved in, but at the same time, like even just the conversation of like mental health and stuff like that. Like we we haven't. We definitely think the same. We, we do. Stuff. We do. I, I think that was one reason why you and me always got along is I kind of knew. I was like, man, honestly, me and Riley are a lot alike. Like, you just see it. We kind of look alike. Whoa. <laughs> it was We're both even, blonde and it, white. It wasn't just that, but it's just like I feel like you and me have like, a lot of commonalities and things. So It's true. And I realize it more and more even as we hang out. And I thought this a year and a half ago, two years ago. And I thought we had a lot of things that in was common. Like younging too. So, it, it is kind of it's kind of cool to see that we, in certain aspects and certain categories and conversations, we think very similarly. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I don't always expect it, but it happens, and we're like, "Hey, look at that!" Ha. All right, I know you already did three, but I already had this one pulled. Why not? Go for it. Do you owe anybody an apology? <sighs> Probably a lot of people, honestly. <laughs> Honestly, probably so many people. <sighs> I don't know. A lot. <laughs> I mean, my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sister. I, okay. My I, nieces, my nephew. Like, well, What's something recently that you feel like you should uh, like apologize to someone for? I definitely should just apologize to my mom. 
even if I think she's not wrong, by the end of the day, I really should apologize to her because last time I was with her, we kind of got in a fight. But, I mean, maybe she did look at me wrong and maybe I did get mad or maybe I did overreact. To the end of the day, I should just... I have definitely am still learning to this day how to, like, be a kind son, but also just, like, be my own person. Mm-hmm. So, I, I should just apologize to her, like, for what happened that yeah. day. No, that makes sense. I, I do... I don't want you to beat yourself up about that though a little bit. I'm not beating myself no, up. No, but I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying in general. Like I'm it's, just saying it takes it would, overall, a long time. It yeah, would overall make the situation better. Oh yeah, well, I'm, I'm just saying as as kind of we were kind of relating to our conversation during the podcast. Like it, it takes time to be able to figure out that dynamic, and mm-hmm. some of it's on you as you get older, but some of it is also on your parents and trying yeah. to even with them realize the new dynamic as their kids get older. And I I mean, I know that's something I I dealt with, with even my parents and I feel like everybody does. It just doesn't always get talked about or, or communicated. So no, I I think it's, it's right that you want to want to apologize for your mom or for your mom to your mom uh, about, about that. But no, I think you're, you're still figuring out there's, there's a lot going on. Life's, Life changes a lot. Yep. And it affects many people. So, life is a strange thing we've been. It is. You know, you, you just think about it sometimes. But and it's. You gotta learn and adapt. So, that's so, life. Yeah. It's hard to wrap your mind around sometimes. It is. Hey, it's just like the Ferris Bueller's quote Life moves pretty fast. If you don't. Shit. It's like. If you don't take a second and look around, you might miss it. Oh, yeah. Something like that. You remember yeah, that? Yeah. I think I butchered it, but you know what I'm going yes, for. Yes, I, I know, <laughs> I know uh, what you're saying. I, th- I think it is true. I think sometimes it it can both be good to live in the moment, but then at the same time you do kind of got to think ahead. But it, it also – you can't obsess too much about the future and the past mm-hmm. and not enjoy where just, you are. Just take – a day by day. Yeah. So. Exactly. All right. Well, yeah. I feel like that's a good place to end it. Yeah. That was a good quote. Well, it was. It was. Yep. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's podcast. And uh, uh, hopefully. Happy 4th. Ha- yeah. Uh, yeah. Happy 4th of July. Happy it'll 4th. be this Thursday. Hopefully everybody has a fun, safe weekend mm-hmm. with your legal explosives. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't do anything I wouldn't do. Uh <laughs> Wow, that's very broad. <laughs> it is. Um, so just enjoy yourself. Be with friends and family. Have fun, but be safe out there. And we'll see you guys all next week. Peace out, guys. Peace out.